Welcome to A Change of Heart Podcast. I'm your host, Angel Walston. And in this space, we navigate life together. We ask the hard questions like, what is the truth you haven't told? But most importantly, we grow together. And sometimes that leads to A Change of Heart. Hey everyone, welcome back to A Change of Heart Podcast. I am your host, Angel. And if this is your first time tuning in, hey girl, welcome to the potty. If you are a returning listener, hey girl, hey, welcome back. Thank you for sticking with me through it all. Today, we are gonna be talking about just some practical ways to reset your day or just to give yourself a reset when you have found yourself in a funk, just not really filling your routine or just wanting to create a way to be more productive and consistent and disciplined. So that's what we're talking about today. But before we jump into that, y'all know we normally do a question of the day. And instead of doing a question of the day, I've decided I wanted to implement something here and there when I'm not really feeling social media and don't feel like posting. And that is a little story time. So and let me go ahead and give this disclaimer. These story times ain't going to have nothing to do with the topic at hand. It's just going to be something that's happened throughout the week that was like, let's talk about this on the potty because what and why? So for those of you who may or may not know, um, I have a dog. He's technically my mom's dog. So he's my brother <laughs> and his name is Gizmo. He's a little peek and which is Pekingese and Poodle mix for those who don't know. And he's a little itty bitty thing, okay? He may be 15 pounds on a good day and love him. He's a little worse something. Homeboy does the most sometimes. And this week is one of those weeks where he did the absolute most. So whenever I come home, I let him out. And usually when he's ready to come back inside, I'll hear him at the door barking. So I was sitting on the couch and I'm like, Gizmo ain't been barking. Like it's been a minute. Like what's going on? So I go outside or I go to the door and I don't see him. So I open the door. I'm calling his name like Gizmo, come in the house. He never comes. I don't see him. And we have like a fenced in backyard. So I go put my shoes on. I go back to the door to like go out there to look for him. And then I see him in the middle of the yard, but like his back is towards me. And I'm like, what is he doing? So I see him chewing something. I think he's eating the grass. Um, If you have a pet, you know, it's not good for them to eat grass. So I'm like, Gizmo, stop eating the grass. And he won't turn around and look at me. I'm like, what is this man's doing? So I walk outside and as I'm walking up on him, I just see him chomping, like chewing, like he is chewing on a neck bone. And I'm like, why is he eating the grass like that? And so I say, Gizmo, stop. This man turns around and looks at me. And all I see are legs hanging out of his mouth. The way I ran to the door, because we don't do animals, okay? I love dogs, but like rodents, we don't do that. So I'm thinking it's a rat. All I saw was legs and a tail. And I was like, it's a rat. We don't do animals. So I texted to my mom and my sister. And I was like, Gizmo is eating a rat. And he won't like drop it. And also, let me also say, so he would not drop it. And I'm like, bruh, what is the reason? Like, why would you do this to me? (laughs) So I'm telling him to drop it. Homeboy had the nerve to growl at me. And I'm like, you've been raised better than this. You know better. So I go in the house to get a broom. I was not going to beat him with the broom, y'all. But I didn't know how else to get him to drop it. So when he sees the broom, he finally drops it. And I'm like, go in the house. Why does he pick it up and like run to the door? Like he's trying to take it in the house. And I'm like, Gizmo, no. So I ended up finally like getting him in the house. Y'all, my mom and my sister both say that they think it looks like a rabbit. They don't think that it was a rat, which I'm like, why would you do that to a rabbit? Anywho, the man's decapitated the rabbit. And I'm like, why? So now I'm like out. My friend said to look, see if I could find the head outside. So when I put him back outside, he's not like trying to eat that too. It was a whole ordeal. And now I was like, I'm over here like Googling, do rabbits have rabies? Like, why would you do this to me? And he just sitting there looking stupid in the face. He's never done that before. I don't know what the reason was. So yeah, that was, that was a long little story time. But that that is how my week started was chasing down this dog to get a rabbit out of his mouth with a broom in the backyard and trying to keep him from bringing this decapitated rabbit into the house. So yeah, that's the story time. (laughs) Um, Let's go ahead and jump into today's topic. 
So as I mentioned earlier, today we are talking about just giving yourself a reset when you found yourself in a funk, when you found yourself um, just needing to add a little bit more routine or change up your routine or just trying to establish some consistency and discipline. And so before we get into the practical tips, y'all know I always got to give y'all a little bit of some background. So I feel like over this past year, I've had no routine. Um, I mentioned in the trailer that I started a new job. This was actually February of last year. So I've been in this situation for over a year now. And that really has thrown my routine just out of whack. Because I go to work so early now, I don't have a morning routine. So I'm trying to now establish a routine when I get off of work because that is just more realistic for me at this point. But I have just found myself feeling like... It's not a feeling of chaos per se, but just more so a feeling of no structure. And I am someone who likes structure and needs structure in certain areas of my life. And so I've noticed that for me, it's not simply just about having a to-do list because I'll have a to-do list and still don't do it. So that in itself is not like motivation for me, but I have been trying to be just more intentional about bringing more structure to my day so that I'm not wasting it, but also that I'm not like putting so much on my plate that I feel overwhelmed and stressed out and not really getting anything done. And also I've shared before, it's like as far as mental health, that's something that I really want to get ahead of. So I want to be really intentional about creating spaces for me that are helpful for my mental health, that are beneficial to making me feel happy, putting me in a good mood. And also, although I say I'm not on social media like I have been in the past, as far as posting, I do be on there scrolling. And everybody knows that whole little rabbit hole of social media. You call yourself scrolling for a couple minutes here and then two hours have gone by and it's like, what am I really doing with my life? So with that, I want to share some things that I, some things I have implemented, some things I want to get back to implementing um, or some things that I'm in the process of trying, but I'm suggesting it because it sounds good. I don't know if it actually works or not, but here we are. Okay. So One of the things that has been really helpful for me as far as discipline and consistency is something that my pastor um, at Liberation actually shared. And he talked about how if you want to create discipline, if you want to create consistency, the easiest way to do that is to add something, add routine into something that you do every single day. And so obviously two things that God willing we do every single day is we wake up and we go to bed. So it's easier to implement a routine in a morning routine or a nighttime routine. And you do the same thing every single day. So obviously, as I mentioned earlier, I don't have a morning routine. My morning routine is to get up and get to work as close to being on time as I can. But I do have, I guess you would call it like an afternoon routine. And so for me, it's like I've had to be more intentional, specifically in this season, about prioritizing, like spending time with God. So I know that's not really going to be a morning thing. Like I may listen to my devotion on the way to work, on the way to work, or I may listen to um, or say like a prayer or something on my way to work. But, you know, I'm half asleep that. I'm not saying it's not beneficial because it's like, do what you can, but also I know like I I need for myself personally to be intentional about actually like giving God undivided attention where I'm awake, where I'm alert, where like I actually remember what I'm talking about. And so what I have decided is um, from 2.15 to 3 o'clock, like that is what I want to be my time to like really have prayer time, my time to read scripture, my time to read a devotion, my time to just be like intentional about my relationship with God. And let me also share this for those of you who may be in a space where you have felt stagnant in your relationship with God, or you've been struggling to be consistent or rebuilding that relationship with God, I know that long periods of time can feel like a lot longer than what they actually are. So if you're trying to commit to doing an hour a day, that can feel overwhelming, that can feel daunting. And I'm not saying to not strive for that, but also don't don't feel like you're not doing enough if you don't make it through the hour. I... I'm learning 
the balance of being intentional and not just giving up because I'm bored, because I'm tired, whatever it might be, versus also accepting that if I have 15 minutes to give and that 15 minutes is actually really productive and that is time that is like well spent with God, like that's good too and that's enough. I think we've been kind of trained to believe that if you're not giving this much, then it's not good enough or you're not doing enough. And a lot of us, when we feel that way, we end up just quitting or we don't even attempt to do it because we feel like, oh, well, that five minutes is enough, 10 minutes is enough, 15 minutes is enough, 30 minutes is enough. Because it's not an hour or however however long, then we feel like that time is not going to be well spent and we end up not doing anything. It's better to do something than nothing. So sometimes it may be helpful for you to just start with 15 minutes, start with the verse of the day, start with um, a prayer, start with something short to work your way up to it. Because a lot of times we just end up talking ourselves out of doing something because we feel like, well, this isn't enough. You have to start somewhere. And the more that you convince yourself that what you have to give is not enough, the easier it will be for you to not do anything. And so with that, that's something that I've been having to remind myself and relearn in this season specifically is to just be intentional about that time and allow that to be the undivided time. So it's not really... For me, I know when I read like my Bible, I need actual the hard copy. It's not beneficial to me to read my Bible from my phone because even on Do Not Disturb, like my brain just like jumps to all these other things and it's like, bruh, I need you to focus. <laughs> like it really is like big squirrel energy because I'm look like I will be trying to read scripture and then something will pop in my mind like, oh, let me let me look this up before I forget because I'll be forgetting stuff. Listen, if you know that you are easily distracted, don't use your phone for your quiet time. If you have to like print out something beforehand, don't set yourself up for the okie doke. Okay. So I share that to say Create some type of routine within within an area of your life where you know you do the same thing every single day because you know like, okay, at this time, so say for example, if you have a nighttime routine, then at this time, I'm going to shut down at say 8 p.m., 9 p.m., whatever, and I'm going to start getting myself ready for bed. And how I get myself ready for bed, I read um, a chapter, I read um, a book even, I do like my little skincare routine, I shower, whatever it might be. Um, I have my prayer time, my quiet time with God. And that's what I do every single night. So it's just helping you to establish some consistency and discipline. And when he said that, it was like, that makes a whole lot of sense because it is obviously easier to put something in place where you already have something that you have to do this anyways. And like I said, God willing, we all wake up, we all go to sleep. So it's easier to establish a routine in that way to place it in within something that you already do on a consistent basis. All right. So the next thing that I have been trying to reframe and think about just in regards to giving myself a reset, not just for my day, but just like a reset of what I've been doing is... Working on just being mindful about how I talk about myself and how I talk to myself. So I was listening to a podcast. This was a while ago, and I can't remember what the podcast was, but they were doing like different questions. And one of the questions that was posed was, would you be your friend based off of how you talk to yourself? Like, would you want to be in a relationship with you? Would you want to be a friend to you if you were to talk to you as a friend in the way that you talk to yourself. And I was like, oh, that's that's kind of loud. Like, that's kind of in my face. Like, whoa there. But that did make me think about just the way that I talk to my friends in comparison to the way that I talk to myself at times. And so I will fully acknowledge that I can be very self-critical. I tend to overthink. <laughs> That's an understatement. I overthink a lot of the times. And as a result of that, that has caused me to be very critical about things that I do. 
And so I feel like this season, a part of something that I am resetting, something that I'm trying to like really be intentional in instilling in myself is to give myself grace and allowing myself the opportunity to walk in grace even when I don't know what I'm doing. Because I shared in um, one of the earlier episodes that something that I'm trying to do is try something new every month, which y'all last time did that. We all, we about to be in April, but that's neither here nor there. But trying to do something that I have not done or something that I'm not good at because I don't like being a beginner and I don't like being in a position where I don't know what I'm doing, control issues, but I'm learning and very much so in the beginning stages of learning truly how to give myself grace and allow myself the opportunity to fail, allow myself the opportunity to get something wrong without feeling like I have to beat myself up about it. And that is challenging. But having that perspective of how you talk to yourself and how you think about yourself, because I think it's as equally important to be mindful of like what you say about yourself, but it's even more important to be mindful of what you don't say out loud, but what you allow yourself to think about yourself, because those are the things that fester as well. And I know a lot of people are big on using affirmations. That may be something that is helpful for you. I'm not saying that affirmations aren't necessarily helpful for me, but I am big about screenshotting things. I am big about writing things on a sticky note. I am big about putting things on a little bulletin board and never, ever looking at that mess again, y'all. So for me, it's like, I'm not saying that affirmations are wrong or there's not, um, or it's something that it's not like a good thing, but know what works for you because it's not beneficial for you to write out all these affirmations and you never look at them or you never say them. So so figuring out like what is it that will help you but i bring that up because for a lot of us we can put ourselves in a position where we remain stagnant or we put ourselves in a position where we talk ourselves out of things because of how we talk to ourselves and because of what we believe about ourselves and it's interesting because you can operate in on the two ends of the spectrum where you can have negative self-talk about yourself and not be insecure and i know that that sounds contradictory but sometimes it's really not coming from a place of insecurity, but it's more so of you just being very self-critical and judgmental with yourself. And I know for me that I, not to toot my own horn, but one of the things that I know my friends will say that people will say is that they know that they can tell me something and I'm not judgmental. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh girl, how dare you? Like, that's never my personality. I always want people to feel safe to be able to share things with me that may be difficult, that other may people, other people may turn their nose up at them or, you know, give them the side eye. I want people to always feel like they have a space where they can share openly and share something that may feel condemning to them, but know that they have a space where like they can talk about it and not feel judged. And I do love that I can be that to someone. However, I'm not that to myself, which I realize how crazy that is. But that is the narrative for a lot of us, specifically as women. We are very good at taking care of other people's feelings while putting our feelings on the back burner or disregarding them completely. And a lot of times when we do that, we don't realize how it impacts a lot of other areas of our lives because we don't strive for things. We don't try to do things. We will tell other people like, girl, you got this. Go apply for that job you ain't qualified for. You can get it because you a boss. You can do all these different things. But when it comes time for us to do it, well, I ain't qualified. Like, I'm not going to get the job. I don't ever win anything. Nothing ever works out. Like, we will go down this whole negative rabbit hole. But it's like, what do you need to do to learn how to build yourself up? What do you need to do to be mindful of how you speak to yourself? What do you need to do to change the narrative of how you talk about yourself? And sometimes it does help. It can feel really awkward, but it can be helpful to have other people tell you like what are some positive things that you notice about me or what are some things that you think are you know good characteristics or traits that I have and write those things out because we never see ourselves in the way that other people do and that can be a positive thing at times when people can point out your flaws and everything that's wrong about you but it's really important for you to be able to 
to see yourself at times through other people's lens, especially when it's a positive thing, so that it helps you to stop being so hard on yourself. It helps you to get out of your head. It helps with the negative self-talk. It helps with the imposter syndrome. It helps to, to reprogram that narrative and give you the reset that you need because a lot of us have been operating beneath where we could actually be because we've allowed ourselves to talk ourselves out of so many things. We've allowed ourselves to create this narrative that is not who we are, or not going to say not who we are, but it's not who we could be. But we're operating in a place that has allowed us to be who we are because we are so negative in the way that we view ourselves. And it's not always a thing about a worth or a value thing. Like sometimes we really are just critical people. This is specifically for people who tend to be perfectionists. Perfectionism, ciao. It will mess you up. So I think that it's really important just to reframe that narrative. And that's something that I'm trying to be really intentional about because I I can easily focus on the things that I didn't get right versus the things that I may have done well or the things that I am growing in or learning in. It's always easier to point out what's wrong than what is right. And so I want to challenge you and encourage you that as you are trying to give yourself a reset, specifically when it comes to mindset, to really think about and consider, how do I talk to my friends? How do I encourage them? How do I make them feel like they can do anything? They can accomplish anything. How do I make them feel strong? How do I make them feel empowered? Because Because if you're a good friend, you don't talk down to your friends. You don't tell them like, you can't do this. You don't like, you don't speak to them like that. You encourage them, you strengthen them. And how much more do we need to be a friend to ourselves? Like how much more do we need to pour that into ourselves as well? And so um, Melissa, Melissa Fredericks, Mrs. Kev on stage, she has talked about having main character energy. And I want to challenge you to have big main character energy in this season. Not a thing of where it's all selfish and self-absorbed. Like it's not about that. It really is about you being your biggest cheerleader and you really speaking life into yourself and getting back to a place of treating yourself as a friend. Because You are the person who processes what you think about you. So why not reframe that process? Why not reset that process? If you know that you have a habit of creating a narrative that is negative more so than one that reinforces positivity, one that reinforces encouragement, one that reinforces um, empowerment. Another thing that has been helping as far as a reset for me is being able to find things that just like really bring me joy, things that really make me happy and implementing those things into my life. So there are a handful of things that like I'm really enjoying in this season. So I mentioned previously that I really enjoy having fresh flowers in my room, although the ones that I have right now are dead, but I really love that. So sometimes my boyfriend will bring me flowers, which I appreciate and I love that, but I also like buying myself flowers. So Kroger, listen, if y'all are a flowers girl, y'all don't want to spend a whole lot of money on it. Kroger, at least the Kroger by my house, they always have roses that are discounted for $2.99 and I get the little baby's breath to go with it. Boom. Got me a cute little bouquet that I can put in, put in my bedroom, $5 or less. If you got the money and you want to splurge, do that too. You can have a bouquet sent to your house. You don't have to wait for a man to do it for you. You don't have to wait for the right time or whatever. Listen, if you want it, you can go get it and you can make it happen. So that is something that really just, it brightens my day when I see that I have fresh flowers in my room. So that is something that I'm trying to be more intentional about keeping that up because I like the fact that this is something that when I see this, this makes me happy. This brings me joy. Another thing that I've really been enjoying is following people who do like DIY things as far as like home renovations. I have no intentions of ever doing any kind of home renovations, but I really enjoy watching other people do it. And there are a few people that I follow on Instagram. Um, The main ones that I really like are Signed Blake. I love the fact that she is a single Black woman. And Miss Mama's has like, she renovated her apartment because she's really big about, you know, like make, make your place your own. Like obviously you got to get it approved by your landlord or whatever. But when she was living in an apartment, like her apartment was beautiful. And then she bought a house, I believe a year ago now, and she has renovated that thing. 
And it is so nice. And it's just, I don't know, it's just something about seeing women who are just like doing the thing. And she has renovated majority of her house like by herself, like something she's had help with. But I just, I really admire that. And I love that. The other person that I watch is, or that I look at on Instagram is Come Stay A While. She's another, she's a little petite, little white lady. Love her. She, I don't know. It's just so, I, it's something about having these little tiny women who are out here like knocking walls down, <laughs> getting it done. I really enjoy that. And another thing that I have really been enjoying, which I mentioned earlier, and I think the first episode of this season is y'all, I'm hooked on true crime documentaries. <laughs> like that has been my jam here lately. And so when something that I don't enjoy doing, I don't enjoy cleaning up y'all. Sis is not domestic in any form or fashion. Like I hate it. I do it because I know I have to. I don't want to be a nasty woman, but I hate it. So something that I've been trying to do is, okay, what can I implement to make me not necessarily enjoy a task that I don't like, but that can help me to get through it? And that is playing one of my true crime podcasts in the background and also just kind of giving myself breaks because sis be tired and I be over it real quick. But yes, true crime podcasts are like really my jam right now. And I I be calling my boyfriend be like, babe, this da 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 happened. He was like, should, should I be concerned? It's like, no, but this is crazy. I just recently um, listened to a two-part episode on John Bonet Ramsey, and I was familiar with it before, but just kind of like listening to like details and all that, I was like, oh my goodness. So I know it sounds weird to be like, it brings me joy to listen to crime. <laughs> like, I know that's weird, but also just consider y'all, I work in a criminal justice field, so there's that. But that's something that has like really been um, um, just like bringing me joy, like implementing that into my day. Another thing, y'all. So something that I am like really working on is soft girl era. OK, so me and one of my friends, we are on this kick to finding our signature scent. We are on this whole thing about like we want to smell good. And so one of the things that we have been doing is just buying perfumes, finding lotions, body oils. Like I really just want to feel like real feminine in this season. And that has been something that I have really been incorporating more because I stayed away from perfumes for a while because I do have a low tolerance for scents. And the ones that I was smelling, it won't, I, I ain't like it, it made my head hurt. And so I'm finding ones that I really do love and I really love the smell good. So something that has been helpful for me, just kind of like with motivation, resetting my day, getting ready, all of that is I like to smell good. And I was smelling good before, so don't don't play with me. <laughs> but it's just like, I, it's something about like getting out of the shower, putting your lotion on, your body oil on, giving you a little spritz to your, um, to your wrist, to your neck. Like it's just something about that that just feels good. And so that has been something that I have been implementing here for the last couple of months that I really love that and going to bed with perfume, like girl, uh, I love that for me. So these are just a couple of things that I've been implementing into my day that have just kind of like reset. It just it is something about certain aspects of things that bring you joy, that make you happy, that help you as you approach your day, especially when you know you're going to have tough days. And so, yeah, those are some things. So just think about like, what are the things that bring you joy? What are the things that make you happy? In season one, I said that I made a happy playlist of songs that like, it just boosted my mood, things that just really made me feel good. And so if I found myself in a funk, I put my playlist on. And it's like, you you just have to find things that boost your mood. You have to find things that make you feel good. I know for some people, essential oils is something that they really like to have like a diffuser. I know for some people, it's we're in springtime now. We've had warmer days, but when it's colder or even if you just have like a dark setting in your room or it, where you work, having like the mood lamp that helps with like, it's not called a mood lamp, but whatever the lamp is that gives you like natural sunlight that to help boost your mood, you just have to find the things that bring you joy. And sometimes it also just helps you to do things that you've never done before. And so as you are thinking about how how can I set up my day or in a way that, you know, helps to 
make me feel excited about starting the day or things that help me to feel more motivated. Think about the things. What is bringing me joy right now? What are the things that are really fulfilling my joy tank? What are the things that I could or what can I do to cultivate joy in my life? Because I think it's really important for you to have something that you're excited about, something that you're looking forward to, something that when you think about it or you see it or you're in a space where it's like you hear it, it just like puts you in a place where it's like, I love it here and I want that for you. All right, last thing I want to talk about is when you're in a space where you feel like you need a reset, not just necessarily for your day, but just a reset in your life, in your mind, all of those things. It is really helpful to have a group of like-minded women who you can connect with, who you can share with, who you can talk to about things, who you can just have fun with. Everything ain't got to be super deep. There may be times where y'all have conversations where, you know, you talk about your childhood trauma and you go through all of these different things that you've experienced. Y'all have a weeping session. That's beautiful. I love that for you. But listen, it ain't always got to be deep. Sometimes it just has to be you spending time with your girls, having an opportunity to get cute or dress down. It could be cute and cozy. But just having that time to come together to like just step away from the things that you may be encountering. Give yourself time to breathe. Give yourself time to not have to focus on something that may be weighing heavy on you. Because the truth of the matter is we don't necessarily always want to keep talking about something that has upset us, something that is bothering us. Like sometimes you do want a little bit of an escape. And it really is a beautiful thing when you have women who you can just connect with. Y'all can just go out to dinner, brunch, the movies, something cute. Go over to your friend's house and and just like kick back, laugh, have the time of your life, and then go about your business. And so for me, that is something that's been like really important and something that I've been wanting to be more and more intentional about this year is really cultivating the relationships that I have. And I'm not on some no new friends thing, but I really do want to focus on the friendships that I have because I really have been blessed to be connected to amazing women. And I'm genuinely grateful for the friendships that I have specifically in this season and how we are able to show up for one another, how we're able to support one another, how we're able to process different things that we may be facing. And I think a lot of times when we are feeling overwhelmed, when we're going through things, we tend to isolate or we feel like I don't want to seem like I'm always complaining or I don't want to be like the Debbie Downer. And so we always choose to bow out. And I feel like there are seasons where it's like, you need to be alone. You need to spend some time with yourself. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it is really powerful to be connected to great women who can pour into you, who can help you, who can encourage you, who can sharpen you. Like, it's so important to have those connections. And I know for everyone, like you, not everyone has the opportunity to be connected to amazing people in every season of their life. I understand like there may be some seasons where you may be walking alone for a little bit. I understand that. But I want to challenge you to maybe find a group, whether it's something through your church. Um, you can go online and see different women's groups that they have, whatever a common interest that you have. So maybe you like cooking. Find a cooking group or something that you can be a part of and even just like building um, relationships there. And also understand that not all relationships are necessarily meant to be friendships, but it's still an opportunity for you to get out. And by getting out, you're getting out of your head, you're getting out of the frigidity of your routine. And sometimes that's really what you need for a reset is just something to change it up a little bit. I think we can be we can end up being creatures of habit to a point of fault that we do the same things all the time. We don't put ourselves in environments to allow people to be what we need in this season. And we can put ourselves in a position where we miss really great opportunities to have connection and a level of depth when it comes to relationships that we actually really do desire. And so maybe you're in a season where it's like you don't have those strong connections when it comes to relationships. I want to challenge you to step outside of your comfort zone. I know it's scary. I know you don't want to. It's like, Angel, I'm fine sitting up in the house. I want to challenge you to try something different, especially if you found yourself in a funk, especially if you found yourself in a position where it feels like you are just kind of like going through the motions. Interrupt that. Change it up. Do something you haven't done before. 
throw, throw your body in the shock a little bit, just, just a little bit by doing something that you haven't done before. And just see, like, just be open to what what can happen. So that is something that I think is just really, really important and necessary to have really solid relationships and connections with people that you can fully be yourself. There's nothing like being in a space that you can fully be yourself. Um, One of my friends, she hosts like a ladies night um, at her house every like couple months or so. And when I tell you, we just kiki, kick it up and have an amazing time. And we just sit there for hours talking about random stuff, like talking about all the things and nothing all at the same time. And it does my soul so well. Even my one-on-one conversations with my friends and like just hanging out with them. A lot of my friends, like my really close friendships, we live in different areas. And so we don't get to see each other a lot, but trying to like just be intentional about maintaining those conversations as far as like phone calls, texts and things like that, which I really do need to do better about that in hindsight. But those are, that's something that like, I really want to be intentional just about navigating those relationships in a way that, um, they know that they're supported by me and know that I am always there to help them, encourage them, whatever they may need as they have done for me in seasons as well. So those are just a couple of some tips that can help with if you need a reset, if you are trying to establish some type of routine or consistency or discipline into your routine, should I say. And I know for some people, um, a couple other things that can be helpful is making a to-do list. So if you need to make a to-do list to be more productive with your time, absolutely go for it. For some people, I know a to-do list can feel a little daunting because you it's rare that you get every single thing checked off of your to-do list every single day. And that's OK. That's OK. This ain't a marathon, y'all. Or no, it's a, it is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Ain't that the saying? It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Whatever the shorter, the longer one is, OK? We're, we're trying to endure. We're trying to give ourselves grace. We're trying to take our time. Be OK with doing that. And also... I don't think I've said this yet, but y'all know I'm team therapy. Sometimes the reset that you need is therapy and speaking with somebody who can help you to get out of your head or to help you to process your thoughts in a way that is healthier for you to be able to establish the routine that is most beneficial for you versus one that is anxiety or stress inducing. So these are just a couple of things that can help when you are in need of a reset or when you're in a position where you feel like you are just kind of over your normal routine or the things that you've been doing. Do something to interrupt that. Do something to change it up a little bit. Do something that is that you haven't done before. Just something to get you out of the rut, to get you out of the mundaneness of what you have been doing. Because we can be in our little bubbles that are comfortable, that are fun for just us, but you typically don't grow in your comfort zone. So... We got to push a little bit. And I know that's uncomfortable, but that's also the point of it, guys. So (laughs) I hope that this has been helpful for you all. I hope that you've taken something away. If you're listening to this, feel free to leave a comment on my YouTube channel or send me a DM on Instagram and let me know what is something that you are doing in this season that you are either making a routine that's helping you with consistency, discipline, something like that, or something that you've changed up. What's helping you in your routine of life? What's helping you as far as having a reset? Did you need a reset? Let's talk about it, okay? I hope you all have an amazing week. And until next time, don't forget, be whole, be healed, and be authentic. Thank you so much for tuning into A Change of Heart podcast. I hope you were encouraged and please take a moment to share with a girlfriend and don't forget to download the episode. Lastly, I would love to connect with you. You can follow me on Instagram at Angel C. Walston and at A Change of Heart Podcast. Have an amazing week and don't forget, be whole, be healed, and be authentic.